And, and then on that, uh, being able to send in documents, please, any documents, any information that you would like to send, send through the uh, the clerk. Uh, now we're going to move to uh, to questions, and the members are going to have an opportunity to ask the witnesses questions. We're starting with uh, Ms. Ikra Khalid from the Liberal Party. Uh, thank you very much. For Mr. seven Chair. minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and uh, and I thank all of your all of the witnesses here for your very compelling testimony. Um, I would like to start by uh, giving Ms. Switch the opportunity to finish uh, her narrative of, of the events uh, that Ms. Ojigo also highlighted as well. Um, so, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Switch, take your time, um, but I hope that you'll leave me some time to ask some follow-up questions. Um, just in, in your remarks, also, if you can address uh, the Cybercrime Act in Nigeria and its impact on, uh, on your advocacy in the, in the online space as well. Uh, so please go ahead, Ms. Switch. Um, okay, so just to quickly round that up, so like you said, I can leave you some time. Um, we were able to sort of hold our ground, and and then the military left um, after a commandant came, who and we got his name. I think they must have. We just guessed they must have found out that there were a lot of people that were watching what was going on. But uh, 45 or 50 minutes later, the police came and did the same thing and, and actually killed people. So um, that's just to wrap it up um, as quickly as possible. With regards to cybercrime in Nigeria, um, I think that's if I understand your question. Um, yes, it's, it's a problem. It is a problem. And just like I said when I started speaking that we've got something about Nigerians. We're very hardworking. And we have this... We have this survival, you know, instinct at every level. There's this desperate need to survive and not excusing that act because it is it is criminal, you know. But um, all I'm saying is something led to something and there's not enough sensitization. There's not enough education, you know, for people to understand what they can use their skills for actually. You know, so it's it's a broad it's a broad scope. It's something that needs to be addressed for intelligent people in Nigeria who don't use it for anything but to do criminal things online. Just thank to you. just to address that, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, and Miss Witch, if you can um, identify and then highlight for us um, what has your life been like since since that fateful day, uh, and uh, and how you are uh, are doing uh, after after that fact. <sighs> I've been on the move because um, I've, it, was, it was two days after my live. The first threat came in. I thought it was a joke. I, I sincerely thought it was a joke. I was on my way home, you know, because I had been on the street for two days straight. But just as I was leaving, because uh, some of my colleagues in the same industry as I am tried to come get me out of the hospital, I was, um, I was sort of vouching for one of the boys that we took in there. He was shot in the neck by a policeman. And just as I left, I got a phone call telling me I should please leave the vicinity that there were military men at the hospital. And I think they found that out because on my story as well, I was thanking the manager of the hospital for uh, letting us into his hospital and for treating us for free. So I think that's how they got that information. So I had to abandon my home. Um, I, I moved from people's homes, like different places. I stayed in someone's property that they hadn't lived in for a long time. And then just to get out of Nigeria, I literally, I, and, and I, I made short videos of my trip, just getting to where I am today. And I'm still traveling. So I, I'm not even done with my trip. And it's like, in, it's like in a forest just to get out of Nigeria. I still, you know, when I put a cotton bud in my left ear, I bleed from there. I have a picture of that as well. I've been trying to document everything. Um, it's I barely sleep. It's crazy. I can imagine parents who have actually who actually can't find their kids now because they've moved bodies. So uh, I don't know. You. Thank you for for sharing that, uh, Miss Switch. I, I I really really hope that things improve. Um, I'll turn to uh, Ms. Ojigo uh, with respect to your comments uh, about Amnesty International and. Uh, your ability to operate uh, in uh, in Nigeria. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, that you've been asked to leave the country. We've seen, uh, you know, and you also mentioned that uh, this NSARS movement is not new. 
what is different uh, in this instance that has brought uh, such large volumes of protests that has really highlighted this issue uh, within the Nigerian people? Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'll start with your last question. Um, a lot of things have been building up in Nigeria um, in the last couple of years. So it was in 2017 that the NSAS um, hashtag started trending online. Um, last year, there was a visit by the Special Rapporteur of the United Nations on Extrajudicial Unlawful Killing. And in her preliminary observations, she noted that the lack of accountability in Nigeria for crimes committed by the state officials is actually leading to a, that we're actually sitting on a keg of gunpowder. So the early warning signs have been there for a pretty long time, and it's, it's kind of like peak, showing that um, the government needed to address this issue. If people complain, you need to ensure that justice is served. So I guess that um, when that video on the 3rd of October was trending, people just had had enough. And also because that month happened to be our independence month, anniversary month as well. Nigeria is celebrating 60 years of independence. So for young people, it's like, what's the future going to look like? I think there was a lot of mixed feelings celebrating our independence from Britain. So all of this culminated in addition to poor, um, we're, we're experiencing one of the worst economic recession of all times um, in recent times. Um, prices of things have gone up. So people are like, we can't even walk free on our streets. So we need justice to happen. Um, with regards to the threat to Amnesty International, it's by a group that we suspect is being sponsored by the Nigerian military. We've not been able to directly link them together, but we've been having threats. Um, uh, we've been having staged protests in front of Amnesty offices whenever we release reports. And we've noticed that it's always when there's been a report linked to the military, we'll just have protesters in front of our office. And we have videos to show that they, afterwards they go and share money and then they leave. But why this threat is particularly worrying for us um, is not because they've asked us to leave Nigeria, they've asked us many times to, to do that, but because we are coming out of a period where there's been one some killings and destruction of property across the country, We've been Thank campaigning you. against the police. Thank you. And so we feel the people that.